it was just revealed that campaign has been waived by the san antonio spurs so for a raptors team in desperate need of a backup point guard is this the perfect match let's get into it Welcome back everybody to Amateur Art Sports, the YouTube channel that is dedicated to Toronto Raptors content and videos just like this. For more content all throughout the offseason and the regular season and beyond, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel and if you find yourself enjoying this particular video along the way, be sure to smash that like button. It does make a huge difference to the YouTube algorithm. It only takes you a second to do. So go ahead and do that if you are enjoying the video. But campaign provides a very interesting opportunity to finally rectify the backup point guard position that has been really causing problems ever since Kyle Lowry left the team in free agency or in a sign and trade to join the Miami Heat. In the last two seasons, we have been really, really hoping that Malachi Flynn would ascend into the backup point guard role because the Raps have pretty much invested all of their stock into Malachi Flynn growing into that role. The 2020 first round pick was a little bit underwhelming in his rookie season, but the Raptors as a whole were underwhelming in that season where they played all of their home games in Tampa Bay. The 2020-21 season brought a very, very poor record to the Raptors, which, you know, helped us get Scotty Barnes. But after that season, Kyle Lowry left. We had Fred Van Vliet, now the sole point guard on the team in the starting lineup. We weren't going with that two-guard lineup anymore, the two-point guard lineup anymore. And we thought that Malachi Flynn would ascend into that backup point guard role. That never quite materialized, but it didn't really matter for the Raptors, who played a positionless brand of basketball in the 21-22 season, which helped them win 48 games. Now, it would have been nice to have a backup guard, especially for Fred Van Vliet, who was near the top or the very top of the NBA in minutes, which ultimately led to some health complications that plagued him in the playoffs and likely plagued him all throughout the next season as well, where we are also hoping that Malachi Flynn would emerge into that backup point guard role. That yet again did not quite materialize. Fred Van Vliet likely overworked again, and now Fred Van Vliet has left the team and joined the Houston Rockets in free agency. We've replaced him with Dennis Schroeder. I'm in the expectation right now that Dennis Schroeder is going to start for this team, but we still lack the backup point guard. I don't think anybody is going into this season seriously saying that, well, now it's time for Malachi Flynn to emerge into the backup point guard role for the Raptors. And you can really tell just how unconfident the Toronto Raptors are in Malachi Flynn doing that because they have put a little bit of stock in their bargain signings, their like exception signings, their cheap signings into bringing in point guards to this team, kind of in hopes that one will work out. The Raptors are going into training camp with five point guards. Now that's typically... Not something you would see with a team that I'm saying is struggling in the point guard position, is struggling with their point guard depth. They have Dennis Schroeder, as I mentioned. We spoke about Malachi Flynn, but then they have the two-way guys like Marquise Noel and Javon Freeman Liberty, and they also have Jeff Downton on a non-guaranteed contract. Now, where the complications are going to come for Jeff Downton, the Raptors can only have 15 players on their roster other than the two-way players. We're about three two-way guys. We already have our two-way players locked in. We only have 15 other players that we can have on the roster. We already have 15 guaranteed contracts going into the season. Jeff Downton is not one of them. So I'm very much fearful of what his stats is going to be going to the next season. I have my suspicions that he is not going to make the final roster, unfortunately. But regardless, the point guard duties, the backup point guard duties, we don't have a player as good as Fred Van Vliet anymore to rely on to take on 37, 38, 39 minutes per game. So we really need to get this position sorted and we need to get this position sorted fast. And perhaps Masai Ujiri's front office has been given a lifeline here with campaign being waived by the San Antonio Spurs. But the campaign situation is a lot more complicated, especially for the Raptors than maybe you might think. Campaign has produced some really good numbers in his time with the Phoenix Suns over the last three seasons. Plus, the season before that where he played all eight games in the NBA bubble where the Phoenix Suns were the best team. They won all eight of their games in the bubble. They still missed out on the playoffs, but they were 8-0 and in the bubble and campaign produced some just ridiculous numbers on ridiculous efficiency, finally stamping an imprint on the NBA after really struggling to find a position earlier on in his career. Now, campaign has been waived off of about five, six million dollars of a contract. The Raptors already with their roster spot full, not with a lot of cap space. It become difficult, but the good thing is this signing is actually possible. The Toronto Raptors are about $2.82 million under the luxury tax, which means they have the opportunity to use that space because 
the minimum contract in the NBA is about $2.74 million. So if you sign a player on a minimum, you can indeed bring them into the team and remain under the luxury tax. And I think campaign may consider taking on a minimum contract on a one-year deal. Now, what the Raps have to do in that point is waive one of their guaranteed contract players. Even though he just signed him, I wouldn't really mind waving Garrett Temple. I also wouldn't really mind waving Malachi Flynn and making room for a point guard who I believe has a much, 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 much better chance of actually affecting the team on a day-to-day basis in the NBA. I believe campaign can do that, but because it's possible doesn't mean it's probable. And this is where the complications come into the campaign situation. So campaign, if you don't know, is actually a former Toronto Raptors player, but it's even more complicated than that. In the 2015 NBA draft, Campaign was selected in the lottery, 14th overall by the Oklahoma City Thunder, one pick after Devin Booker was selected by the Phoenix Suns. And after a very difficult year and a half with the Oklahoma City Thunder, where he never really made an imprint in any sort of way, he was dealt to the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls felt confident enough in his ability and the potential of what he could become as a former lottery pick that they ended up trading Taj Gibson, Doug McDermott, and a second round pick in order to make this deal happen. But after only one full season in Chicago, he played half the season prior, then half the season after the full season, The Chicago Bulls were not liking what they were seeing from the player, despite the fact that he produced some okay numbers, like improved numbers compared to what they saw with the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Chicago Bulls wave campaign, and they waved him to make room for Marshawn Brooks. Now, you know, not to be disrespectful, but I don't know who that is, but we all know who campaign is at this point. So why didn't it really work out in Chicago? Flat out campaign was underperforming and he was underperforming to the fact that the Raptors who took a chance on campaign in the next offseason, the 2019 offseason, fresh off of an NBA championship, trying to bolster their guard depth for the upcoming season. They took a shot on campaign in the training camp and he wasn't even good enough to make the final roster. He never even registered an NBA game with the Raptors. and He was beat out in training camp. So the Raptors had their opportunity with campaign, as did the Chicago Bulls, as did the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder traded him for some pretty good value. The Bulls discarded him for nothing. And the Raptors as well discarded the player for nothing. And maybe this was the wake-up call that campaign needed because the 2019-2020 season was one hampered by health and safety protocols where that is where he had an extremely successful season playing in the G League. But before that, to even get basketball reps in general, he was playing in China. So campaign really almost saw his NBA career completely evaporate. Players electing to not go to the bubble revived his career because he was given that opportunity by the Phoenix Suns and he seized it. For some players, sometimes getting cut, sometimes getting waived is the wake-up call they need to sharpen up their game, to take their game to the next level. Also, for players maybe playing at a lower level like the G League and putting up, let's say, 23 points per game in the 15 games that he did play with Texas, perhaps getting that confidence up is just what the player needs as well. He brought that confidence into the bubble. The Suns were absolutely rolling in the bubble, and that landed him a mainstay job with the Phoenix Suns for the next three years. But the Suns now in full-on contention mode. They got Bradley Beal. They got Kevin Durant. They were looking to make cap space to sign all these players on minimum deals. Campaign no longer fit into the plan for the team, so they traded him to wait in a salary dump to the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs, looking to ascend, looking to work on their young core, decided it was not worth it to have Campaign on the roster, so he is now a free agent. So, the Raptors certainly have the opportunity to sign him, but what makes this move not very probable for myself is the fact that campaign seems to really hold a grudge against the Raptors. In any games you've really seen campaign play against the Raptors since they cut him, there's definitely a little bit of a vendetta against the team. There's definitely something lingering there. I mean, who wouldn't want to disprove the team that cut you? I mean, you got cut and now you're a mainstay NBA player. How could that team not see the talent that you possess? Well, the Raptors were not the only team that waived him. And the Raptors... We didn't even see him in the NBA game because he was beat out for a roster spot in training camp. Like, it was very clear when the Raptors signed him that it was going to be very difficult for him to make the roster. Like, everybody knew that in 2019 when they signed campaign. And it was no surprise, really, when he was waived by the team. In fact, if you go back, I can't remember the exact episode, but back when Amateur Sports, this channel, was strictly a podcast only on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, 
There is maybe a podcast where campaign is referred to by myself and a guest as the worst point guard of the NBA. Well, he's not the worst point guard of the NBA anymore. In fact, he's a valuable point guard for a team that needs a backup. But what makes this move even more improbable for the Raptors to get is the fact that there's going to be a lot of teams who recognize campaign as a great backup option and one they can get on a very cheap contract. The Raptors, sure. They can afford to get him on a minimum deal, but there's going to be a lot of other better teams than the Raptors who are going to be able to get campaign potentially on a minimum deal. So the inclination being presented by various members of NBA media is that he's been waived and he now has the opportunity to look for a new team that is a contending team. Campaign is like going to find himself on a contender in some capacity where he's going to be on a very much winning team. The Raptors are a bit of a loose cannon this season. Yeah, they're going to be going for wins, but how good is a team? How many wins are they actually going to be able to achieve? As far as campaign is concerned, this is a team that had the chance to sign in 2019 and outright didn't. And this is a team that is likely, very much likely, not going to be a contender this season. So campaign is the perfect fit. The perfect match for what the Raptors need for the backup point guard position, but I would be shocked beyond belief if Masai Jiri managed to pull this deal off. The Raptors, still without a serviceable backup NBA point guard, will see what happens after training camp and who they take into the season. What are you guys' thoughts and opinions on campaign? Do you think the Raptors actually have a chance of making this deal happen? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that is it from today's video. Drop a like if you did enjoy. It does support the channel and it only takes you a second to do. And please subscribe to Amateur Art Sports if you enjoy Raptors content like this. I have videos coming out at least three times a week. Streams twice a week. Shorts coming out. So much Raptors content all the time over here. Please be sure you're subscribed and supporting the channel. Oh,